welcome everybody to the uh, book study on Rolo Tomasi's book, The Rational Male, Dating Meetups, and the Nonpartisan Red Pill Men's Group. And so what we're doing here is a book study. And so I've got this chapter on non-exclusivity, or this section, um, and it's a little long for a reading, so I've highlighted parts that I'm going to read from the book. But um, I'm also going to put up the screen with the text so that we can look at the text as well. And But I'm going to be skipping through, not reading every word. And then we will just open it up for discussion and uh, have a good time. You know, we often, there's a myth, isn't there? A lot of myths out there. And one is that men are all about looks. Uh, and it's not women are proven to be more uh, about looks or more, what's the word, selective by appearances, that that looks are so much more important. I mean, they're cutting out 80% of the men, you know, whereas men, we find we can find a lot of women attractive, you know. There's a niche for every body type, every age, you know, every, you know. So, um, but women are really much more, um, harsh about looks than men are so so when we so but the idea that men are all about looks comes from the fact that you know things that sexually stimulate us are purely and solely sexual they're you know it's the woman's body it's the woman's appearance it's not their income it's not the car they drive whereas certain things turn that turn women on that women are attracted to have really nothing to do with sex so that's why we get this message that men are all about sex, but it's not true. Women are much more about looks than than men are. I, so I think I think where it came from is a, a small handful of men uh, put out this me stupid message about that all oh, men we are you know this and that, and I think it gets broadcast that all men are now into that. So I think uh, we have to, uh, <laughs> you know, whoever these men are that are speaking up on behalf of all of us, they need to shut up and. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think look the dating app show that you know it's complete the reverse, but also too I will I will I will uh, say one thing is that men historically and even today are not putting enough effort into their appearance, and that's true for myself and most men who are complaining about not getting results, sadly are not putting enough into their appearance, whether it's losing weight, whether it's you know working on their um, you know, whatever it is, facial or moisturization or whatever it is, right? I don't think men have gotten the, me the memo yet and are acting upon it. Um, I'm, I'm on my fitness journey, losing weight, putting on more lean muscle. Um, you know, there's things I can't change, but there's a hell of a lot of things I can. Um, and so, and so I think we need to optimize uh, our um, looks potential the way women do, um, whether, you know, it's losing weight or whatever it is. I think there's a lot that we can also do that somehow we're just not wanting to and then just wanting to complain um i'm not gonna you know uh, you know say it's a perfect world and it's fair it's not fair but there is still more we can do um so yeah that's yeah. that yeah. i think that's right and you know i've just found on one of these discount internet sites and i actually have ordered you know they're kind of like girdles for men Trading, you know, they're they're selling girdles for men. In other words, to make your stomach flatter, you know. And I've been losing weight, and that's fantastic. And you know, watching what you dress, how you dress, right? How you, what clothes you wear. I, I, you know, especially on a date, you know, a lot of guys. And I used to do it: jeans and a t-shirt, jeans and a t-shirt, jeans. No, no, you get. But when you go out, you need to dress. You know, I got. I wore this last night. Um, sometimes I wear one outfit per weekend. <laughs> but um, yeah, how you dress and all of that. So um, yeah, that's all important, and men um, need to recognize that. You know, Samuel, you're on. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Samuel. I have. Hi, Samuel. Yeah. I have a friend that has high blood pressure. I've been friends with him for all the time since 2008. 
um, we were at church, um, we prayed together, and I prayed with him, but for some reason it seems like he's going through difficulty at the moment, and um, he only called me on the 1st of May, and I don't understand why he hasn't been calling me all this week, and um, it's hard to understand what he's going through, because he's now telling me he hasn't heard from his parents, because he's spending time on his own, but he's He's thinking more about what the Lord is telling him to do because he was telling me today that um, I would only listen to God, but I won't listen to what other people tell me to do. Hmm. Well, I would. And, uh, yeah, go ahead, Sam. But the thing is, I'm also doing what God is telling me to do as well, but I'm not going that deeply into it. And um, at the same time, with what Kathy said, um, I feel that she's also a nice person to speak to because if I was to meet Kathy, I probably would want to be her friend because yeah. of the way she sounds. All right. Thank you, Samuel. Um, and also, I do like um, women with tan skin as well. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what your friend is going through, you know, as far as that goes, you know, and, um, but, um, yeah, I think Kathy's on the right track, you know. Yeah, and then everyone else has told me to give um, him a little bit of space, but even my mom said, she said to me, he's coming with me to Spain soon, so just give him a bit of time on his own. My friend Eric has given me advice, my Christian friend. Uh, that I spoke to yeah. online, and he's told me what I can do for the meantime being, like other events online and things. I've spoken to Pastor William. He said he doesn't want to um, speak to Junior more about it, and Pastor Yemi, they, they, they said they're now leaving it to us to deal with it, but it's hard to deal with it myself. One thing I would say is this idea I'm going to listen to God but not listen to other people neglects the fact that God can speak to us through other people. So yeah. you, you have your ears open, you know. Yeah. Uh, some people um, you know, don't don't really have their ears open, and and so you really you you want to um, get that feedback because. You want to mm. exist in your faith in community, um, not just an individual. Um, I mean, I guess you can be spiritual alone, but you really can't be spiritual alone because spirituality mm. is so much about how you interact with others mm. and what you do yeah. for your community. So, mm. um, so yeah. Um, so some also, some of the time he was um, saying that he's forgotten stuff some of the time because um, he's been seeing stuff and seeing visions because they're talking about visions today in church how people see things and want things differently in their lives so I don't know what Junior is experiencing in his life well one thing is that there's a difference that to you have to discern visions you have to discern these things and sometimes they're Visions, if they have a positive impact on you, if they in motivate you to do something good, but if they have a negative impact where they're um, causing you to tune out, to be out of reality, to um, not interact, to isolate, because a vision will, ne will never really tell you to isolate. A vision is about um, who your purpose in life, your the meaning mm -hmm that it's yeah. spirit giving you a message and there are many yeah. ways to get messages from spirit yeah. but um but yeah. you have to because i sometimes feel well sorry to interrupt i sometimes feel frustrated um inside when he doesn't contact because he used to contact more frequently mm -hmm. but the only time he contacted me was on the first of mm -hmm. may okay 
Well, you know, you can try to reach out to him, you know, call him too, because it's not just... I can't, I can't, basically. I have to wait for him to okay. call or message me, because yeah. I've been told what the rules are, that because he's blocked me on WhatsApp <laughs> and sometimes unblocks me and then speaks to me, but then um, I tend to not think about it so much. I was talking to someone else this week as a friend if I should come off all social media or because of this situation, but I don't know what to do. Well, what I would say is um, let this guy go and try to focus on other things. Huh? And so try and focus on other things. Try not to focus on him. You know, focus on what do you mean? other things. What do you mean focus on other things, though? Yeah, well, there's, yeah, well, that's, that's um, what you kind of have to do. You have to have your own life um, and your own goals and your own vision and your own um, purpose. So, yeah, but I'm going to be seeing him in the week at his um, workplace where we meet and even on a um, Thursday. And the only time I can meet him is in church or outside. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to his house because he's now saying that I can only come there when he says, but how long is this going to be happening for? Well, that I don't know. But that seems like an issue that you're going to need to deal with with um, your pastor. Um, no, because I've tried speaking to um, William and Yemi and they've gone through all these things before, but they don't seem to want to um, say anything about it. They just want to um, tell me to um, to do lots of different new things right. in well, my life. Right. Why they want to say that. Right. Well, they're right. They're right. You need to do something different and not focus on this guy is what I'm saying. So um, we're coming to the end. Um, the last half, though. I know it's hard, but... Um, is this a romantic interest of yours? Or are you romantically involved with this person? He's just a friend. Okay. So don't focus on him too much. Let him be, you know, and, and make new friends, you know, that that won't block you. Or um, find out why you're being blocked. And one reason may be is that, you know, like for us, we cannot focus on one woman. We can't be so focused on one person. You know, that's what dating non-exclusively is about. It's about meeting multiple people, going out on multiple dates and, and so forth. And once we start focusing on one we're, woman, we're, we're kind of lost, you know. That woman's right. got power over us. We're not really demonstrating our sexual market yes. value. We're not demonstrating um, pre-selection mm -hmm. that other women want us. We're just right. obsessed with this one person. And we can't yeah. be, you know, yeah. we have to, um, we have to, because otherwise they lose interest in us. If we're too obsessed yeah. with them, they're going to yeah. think we're, we're weak and we don't have anybody else and we don't, not very good in value, you know, yeah. so don't be obsessed with a woman. Let her call you, let her chase you. Never chase a woman. Always try and allow her to chase you. And right. And pursue the women who are um in um who are interested in you. You know, that's the thing. And that's the thing with Kathy. Pursue the men who you think are interested in you, right? And and that works a lot better than chasing after a woman who doesn't have that much interest in you. So, thank you, everyone. Matthew, Clint. That's awesome. There's also a guy um, as well, just a friend that uh -huh. I'm not having a romantic. It's just a friend that um, I seem to um, be hooked on to. Yeah. And uh, I do like other women as well, though. Yeah. even though I'm still thinking about the one um, person. But everyone said to me, it's not only Junior in this world to be friends with. There's lots of other people. Exactly. And there's lots of other guys and lots of other women to date and get to know, you know, and it's, it's not the health, the obsession is not healthy with that person. So, um, I have a question for you, Rich. 
Okay. Do you think this non-exclusivity topic applies in homosexual relationships? Or do you think that guys are just different? Like, it's expected that it's non-exclusive in homosexual relationships. No, I, I think definitely it applies. Well, it applies to all relationships, I think, because of the gender thing. There's always a, a submissive and a dominant, it seems like. And that may be a part of sexuality. And some ways, I know Orion Taraban said that sex sex and respect can exist together, you know, when we, but I don't know if that's true. But sometimes when we have sex, we get down and dirty, you know? So, um, so, but... Uh Jordan Peterson had an interesting comment. He said that in lesbian relationships, it's the it, it, they they tend to not work because the, the, the way the women are, um, and I forget the details, the you know the, the psychological uh, explanations that he had, yeah. but it was an interesting observation that most l lesbian marriages don't last at all. Yeah, well, I would say that maybe gay are more are more tolerant but i there's a couple right down the way from me and they're they're monogamous i think they want to and they're getting married and so forth so but i and i think okay transgender is different they they actually yeah. have the mentality of women right but some ways yeah. they might be more tolerant too okay um, i'm just curious yeah you know there's a you know, if you have a, I don't want to be too, but if you have a trans, like a transgender might, you know, be more willing to have, just like women, you know, willing to be with, share a guy. It might, you know, that whole that concept of sharing, sharing the top guy, you know, um, is, um, is out there. So there may be gay men who are like that, but maybe there's a difference because uh, men are willing to be with a guy um, who is at their level, whereas women always want a guy that's higher up. So that, you know, all those dynamics may come into play in those relationships too. I'm not an expert on that. So, yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, Samuel, Jay, and Kathy. Matthew for being, coming here. Doris and Christina, thank you for joining us. And next week, we're next month. I mean, next month we're doing transitioning. You cannot, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the next part of the book, um, plate theory three transitioning. And so next month, um, make sure to be there. Thank you everybody for showing. Um, I put, I've been publishing these shows. Um, thank you, Jay. I've been publishing these shows on, at my YouTube channel. So, um, and I think I've sent everybody links. I hope you all got links to that. And um, so subscribe to that and join that. Um, it's the nonpartisan red pill men's group and find that on YouTube and on Facebook. And um, you're welcome, Doris. All right. So thank you, everybody. I'll see you Thanks. next month. Thanks, thank Richard. You, okay, thank you, Richard. You all, thank you very much. Month, everyone. See you next time. Bye -bye. All thank right, you. Me. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye now. Ever feel like a loser? A sucker? Someone who got played? You should. Because if you still support Trump, that's what you are. You got played by this guy. All his promises, come on. They're as real as his hair. He never built the wall. He never did the trade deals. He was never going to. It was all a show, a con game. He said you'd get tired of winning, but you're just tired. Tired of giving him money to pay for his lawyers. Tired of watching him embarrass you. Tired of his lies, his lawsuits, his trouble. Tired of defending a man who doesn't deserve your support. You know he won't change. You know he's the architect of all his problems. But he thinks you're gullible, that you can't figure him out. If you keep supporting him, you're proving him right.